Moving to the exterior of the building, let's model the facade. So we have a driver facade part where we're going to model our facades. Let's grab the levels and do a quick distribute of the levels into our facade. And now we're going to go back to our envelope massing and extract some faces from that volume. There are 12 faces that we need to extract, right? Four faces for each of these three cubic volumes. We're going to try to do this in an orderly fashion uh, so that it's easy to track. Again, outside of this demonstration, if this was a production project, this would all be done with uh, unique naming. Uh, each face would get a name. That name would be consistent across all of the operations that happen on that face, including the eventual construction work packages. Uh, but for the sake of this, we're just gonna we're gonna move quickly, make some extracts. We've got to extract seven through eighteen here, and that's gonna be sufficient. We've done that in our facade model. Now we're gonna make some curtain walls. Inside building 3D design, we have what's called the variable curtain wall, which is a, a very powerful patterning tool to create dynamic and interesting facades. So let's select our first face and we're going to input planes. We're going to take the top of slab plane from our level set and that's going to create what are called bands. Now bands are a very powerful concept, basically breaks down each uh, curtain wall face into a repeatable segment. We'll, we're going to reduce the band height to zero and we're going to work in these different segments now. Initially all segments are equal and will be identical across each individual band. We set the height greater than the, the story height so that we just have one panel per story and now we're going to align the pattern to the left and change the values of the pattern and the value the pattern is repeating based on these values. We're basically making three panel widths. We'll right click on the band above and make that one unique so that we can align it now to the right hand side. We're not going to change the pattern, we're just going to change the alignment. That way the panel sizes are going to be the same across all of the different band segments. We're next going to right click on alternating bands and make them similar to the segment that we had just made unique and aligned to the right. Okay, so basically we're having alternating facade patterns. Beyond that we can control the geometry of the mullions. And we'll do this again by story section. So we've got two different types of story section in here because we've made alternating patterns, alternating stories. We have two types of unique segments that we need to modify individually. So we need to make sure that the mullions, mullion dimensions are similar across both of those different pattern band segments. In addition to mullion geometry, we can also control the graphic properties, whether it's the color or the transparency. And here you see when I zoom out, I did not set mullion dimensions to be the same on both of those pattern segments. So there's pattern that's aligned to the left and pattern that's aligned to the right. I just modified the segment of the facade that's aligned to the left. So I need to go back to the segments that are aligned to the right, update the mullion geometry there, as well as the graphic properties because those are two different types of panel, pattern, and facade, even though they live within the same facade feature. So there. Now everything is consistent across my facade. I've got my variable curtain wall, and I'm gonna make a second one on my second face. Now one fantastic feature of variable curtain wall is match. When you click on the match button, you select a pre-existing variable curtain wall that you've already done, and it will automatically take all of the settings from that facade from that variable curtain wall and apply it to the current variable curtain wall. So take the time, model one variable curtain wall and get it just right and then you can easily match, basically copy paste the settings from the original variable curtain wall to your next variable curtain wall. I do that for all of these four faces and now we're going to go to the, the middle section One thing you'll note is that uh, when I tried to match my initial variable curtain wall, it missed a couple of the input planes that did not intersect the original variable curtain wall input surface. So I just need to go back and re-add, so add the additional planes. And then I'm going to again eliminate those bands by setting their height to zero. 
Now all I need to do is make those bands similar to the alternating sections that are below it. So we'll make it unique, make it similar, make it similar. And these two bands will inherit the pattern and the orientation from left to right from the bands below that I just set similar to. There we go. Now that once now that variable curtain wall is set, it has all of the additional plans that I need. I can make new variable curtain walls and I can match to that fifth variable curtain wall that includes all of the story level planes. So you see, I'm just gonna continue making my way around the building. I'll make a new variable curtain wall. I'll match it to the previous variable curtain wall, all the while creating the same pattern. And what's really nice about this is all of these variable curtain walls are going to have the exact same panel sizes. And that means that the panels that I create for one facade are going to be able to be reused across all of these different facades, which is going to maximize reuse and really optimize the manufacturing and the fabrication of this facade project. You see I'm working now on the first facade face of the third volume. Same situation, I had to add a new plane when matching from the very first variable curtain wall, and then I can just make similar that top band relative to the one of the alternates down below and then we'll continue continue the process of making uh, of matching variable curtain walls around the rest of this final volume so that's an overview overview of variable curtain wall it's a really powerful command for facade design you can go wild with some of the control parameters to create really radical curtain walls that you wouldn't expect especially based on what you see here. And we'll see then in later steps how to take this variable curtain wall from a concept design to a detailed design for fabrication. Let's move into a more advanced topic here. So one of the real strengths of Katia is to be able to link the concept design model with a detailed design model and take the detailed design model to a very high level of detail ready for manufacturing. So in this case, we're going to take the variable curtain wall facade that we just modeled as a concept design model and we're going to detail it for fabrication. So we'll start this by preparing the facade model. We're going to add a 3D shape in our detailed model. We're going to extract, take the extracted face from our facade model into our detailed model. We're going to do that by translating the surface just so we get the external reference. And then we'll delete that translate and just use the surface from our external references geometrical set. We're going to quick, quick distribute our levels so that we have them available when we match our facade. And now let's grab our surface in our detailed facade part and let's match that variable curtain wall, a new variable curtain wall to the first variable curtain wall that we modeled. Now, one of the really incredible aspects to variable curtain wall that uh, most people don't know about is the extract cells command. So when you click extract cells, it's going to give you an organized set of surfaces and curves and axis systems that are organized by family type. So here we have, uh, based on the pattern that we set, four parent panel types and repeats of those four panel types. And this can go up to any number depending on the number of different panel types that you that the algorithm in the extract cells uh, command has found. Now we have an, a detailed engineering template here. This is a facade panel that is parametric and will adapt to the inputs that you assign to it. And we're gonna use component-based design to go from the concept model of these extracted cells to the detailed model for fabrication. We use capture component specification to associate the object type inputs to the extracted uh, variable curtain wall cells as output. And now using the component based design capture component specification command, we will select the geometrical set that contains the outputs from the extract cells command and we'll filter that selection by string to make sure that we're only grabbing the proper output to fill in the input for our engineering template. We'll do this for each of the inputs. So we'll filter to the bottom edge, left edge, 
right edge and the top edge, making sure all the inputs are complete before we instantiate our engineering template. Click OK and the, comp the component specification has been captured in our part. Now when we go to the product level in uh, building and civil assemblies, we can change level of development. Changing level of development will instantiate the engineering templates that have been associated in our object type and been assigned to the component specification. When we click process, that's going to insert those four engineering templates, parametrically replacing the inputs based on the outputs from our extract cells. And now we're gonna go from building a civil assemblies application to the assembly design application. And we're gonna assembly pattern our master panel to the repeat axis systems that have been generated with the extract cells. So let's select our panel, click assembly pattern, select the geometrical set where the axis systems of the repeats is held, and Katia is going to automatically generate the panels in the correct locations based on an axis to axis transformation. Now, when we hide the extracted cells, when we hide the axis systems, we can navigate around our model and see that we have, over the course of just a few minutes, instantiated all of our detailed panels into the model and gone from a concept level of detail facade model to a fully detailed facade model ready for fabrication. That is a no coding, no scripting, step-by-step uh, -step process to go from a concept design model to a detailed design model. And each of these models is, uh, because it's using an assembly pattern, we're maximizing reuse, we're maximizing uh, our performance by creating uh, instances uh, instead of new references every time we're instantiating a new assembly pattern. So uh, it's a fantastic way to manage a model from concept to detail, and it's a really powerful concept that we uh, use in Katia, not just on facades, but for uh, additional building features. Now that this facade is complete, there are a number of ways we could duplicate this facade on other areas of the building, particularly on the opposite end. But as I mentioned earlier, when we were creating the, the initial variable curtain wall pattern, because the pattern is has been matched to the different surfaces, all of the panels should be the same size as these four original panels. So it's just going to be a question of extracting the cells for the other facades and then running the assembly pattern command again on the extracted axis systems to detail out the rest of this facade model for fabrication.